Good morning guys. I am going to talk you through a practical that you probably haven't done for a while and that is testing different foods for its energy content. Now this is a practical that you might see more often in physics because it's looking at the transfer of energy. However, it can come up in biology as part of our human nutrition and digestion topic, specifically on a paper two, because paper two assesses your practical skills more frequently. Now you have recently seen as part of your exam practice, a five mark, almost corms like question um, which is asking you to describe an investigation um, to look at how much energy a crisp contains. Now, this is the practical that it is talking about. Now, quite often, scientists use a specific piece of equipment called a calorimeter, which is this. So this is a little calorimeter which is made of copper, and it's got a nice little lid with a hole in that you can put a thermometer in, which you can um, use okay, to heat your food underneath it, and it will contain water, and you will look at how much energy is transferred by the temperature change. Okay, Now, this little piece of equipment is a calorimeter. There is a more accurate piece of equipment that scientists use called a bomb calorimeter, which is very similar other than the fact that it's more insulated, so it will have an extra layer of uh, metal inside to insulate it, as well as a uh, more sturdy lid and a stirrer to move the water around. Now, a bomb calorimeter is the most accurate piece of equipment that we have to measure the energy transfer because it limits energy transfer to the surroundings. However, in our crew setting within a school laboratory, we only have a boiling tube okay, and a thermometer, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, to measure the energy um, in a piece of food, we are going to need a thermometer and we are going to need water in our boiling tube. Now, when you're talking about the water, you are going to need to have a set volume of water. You do not need to stipulate how much. So for example, they're not going to put on the mark scheme specifically 10 centimeters cubed, as long as you tell me there is a set volume. Now in here, I've got 40, but 40 centimeters cubed of water, which I'm gonna pop in here. I'm going to measure that using a measuring cylinder and then I'm going to put in my thermometer. Now I'm going to leave my thermometer for, let's say, a couple of minutes to acclimatise so I can measure the starting temperature of the water. Now that's really important that I measure the starting temperature of the water because I am going to use my temperature change to work out how much energy is in my food. Okay. Now, because I have a set volume of water, I am also going to have to have a set mass of food. Okay, so I am going to measure my food on a scale so I know how much it weighs so I can accurately calculate the amount of energy that has been transferred. Okay, so my crisp is 1.19 grams. Okay, I'm doing this with a crisp because that is what my exam question is asking me for. Okay, okay, so my starting temperature is 20 degrees. Okay, so my starting temperature is 20 degrees. My mass was 1.26 or whatever it was. Okay, so I am then, okay. going to okay, I am going to light my crisp using a Bunsen burner and I'm going to place it on fire underneath my boiling tube. This is going to smoke a lot okay, but I am going to I'm going to leave it here until it's completely burnt out, so until it will no longer light anymore. Okay, so I'm going to leave this here. Now I'm holding it quite close to the bottom of my boiling tube. We can see there's some fat already dripping off of this crisp. Okay, um, but I'm holding it quite close to the bottom of my boiling tube because I need to minimise the distance. Because if I've got, if I'm holding it down here. 
that is going to affect my temperature change. And that's one variable that you're also going to need to control. So you could measure out the distance. Okay, You can actually, if you had this as an investigation, you could probably um, use that as a variable you change in terms of changing the distance. Okay, So my crisp is completely burnt. I don't think that's going to really light anymore. And I am going to measure the temperature change. So that's gone up to 29 degrees. So that's increased by 9 degrees. Just open the window there. Okay, I can then calculate the energy content in my food, okay, by doing a calculation. So what I would do, I would multiply the specific heat capacity of water, which is 4.2, that's a standard, standard number, okay, by the mass of water. Now I had 40 mils of water, 40 mils equals 40 grams. Okay, I could even weigh my water just to prove that. Okay, but 40 mils equals 40 grams. Um, and then I would multiply by the temperature change, which is 9 degrees, and divide by the mass of my crisp. That is how I would work out how much energy is in this crisp. Okay? Now, you, as if we were looking at this as an investigation, we might be comparing different foods. You could do this and repeat this with other foods. You would repeat it with multiple crisps um, just to make sure that you have an accurate value when you are calculating your energy change. Okay, And that is how we would calculate the energy content in a crisp. Okay. Okay, editing Miss Ryder here. Um, just thought I would talk you through the calculation that I mentioned at the end. Now, this is um, taking a little bit from... GCSE physics as well, because the 4.2 is actually the specific heat capacity of water. Now, that is a standard value. OK, you are expected to remember it in physics. I think you're given it. Um, but for biology, you do need to remember that it's 4.2. OK, you multiply it by the mass of water, which was 40 grams, multiplied by the temperature rise for us was nine. And we divide it by the mass of the crisp. Now, what that is going to give you is the total energy that is transferred per gram of the crisp. OK, so what we have is 1,270 joules transferred per gram of crisp there. OK.